Well, as we mentioned, a lot of big games coming up in the NFL. Some games might not mean a whole lot for certain teams, but there's a few, and especially this one that we're going to get into, that means a whole lot, and that is for Seattle and San Francisco. Joining us here on ESPN, Honolulu, 92.7 FM and 1420 AM via the Zephyr Insurance Hotline from the Santa Rosa Press Democrat. Grant Cohn is with us. Hi, Grant. How's it going? Doing great. How are you? Doing well. And again, there's a lot of big NFL games this week, and I'm not sure if there's many bigger. I know Dallas Philly's a big one, but for San Francisco, Seattle, it, both teams are in the playoffs, obviously. So in that way, you can say, well, maybe it's not that big. But I think there's a huge difference as far as winning this game and winning the division and getting a buy in home field in the first round, as opposed to being a wild card, having to play an extra game and opening up on the road. Yeah, I would consider it a must-win game for both teams, even though the loser goes to the playoffs. The problem is the loser has to be a wild-card team, and that means just to make the Super Bowl, you'd have to win three straight games on the road. And it's been done four times uh, by the Patriots, the Steelers, the Packers, and uh, one other team. Um, Was it the Giants? It was the Giants, yes. So they're all east of the Mississippi. It's less travel over there for West Coast teams – it's a lot of extra travel. For the Niners to pull that off, they'd have to go to probably Philly, New Orleans, and Green Bay most likely. And that's like 12,000 miles of travel round trip. That's like going halfway around the world. Uh, I think it's probably impossible. So they need to win this game. They played, I believe it was week 10. Seattle wins that one. I don't. To me, I don't think you can look so much at that game and think that'll help determine or how to predict this game. I believe George Kittle missed that game, but that was so long ago. When you look at these two teams now, they're both playing excellent football. They both probably had a loss that they didn't expect or had thought they were going to get in the last three weeks. What do you think is the biggest key for either team winning on Sunday? Jeez. Well, I, to me – the Niners are getting Kittle back. They're, they're much healthier than they were the, uh, the first time these teams played each other week 10. And the Seahawks are, are much more banged up. We all know they've lost all their running backs. They brought in Marshawn Lynch, and they've lost their left tackle. And even with their left tackle the last five, last five or six weeks, Russell Wilson got sacked about 25 times. So uh, it seems like actually the Niners are playing better football than the Seahawks recently. The Seahawks – got kind of blown out by the Cardinals and the Rams are two teams the Niners have handled. Um, so I would, I would give the Niners the edge in this game. To me, for the, for the Seahawks to really have a chance, Marshawn Lynch has to have a big game. Like not just five carries. He needs to run the ball like 16, 17 times because I don't think they have the offensive line to protect Russell Wilson right now. We're talking Seattle, San Francisco football with Grant Cohn from the Santa Rosa Press Democrat here on ESPN Honolulu via the Zephyr Insurance Hotline. Grant is on Twitter at Grant Cohn. You know, it just sounds funny in a way you saying that about Marshawn Lynch because four days ago, whatever it was, he was not playing in the NFL. Do you think he can possibly make that kind of a difference in this game? I, I, I have no idea what kind of conditioning he's in and what, what kind of endurance he has. If he'll have four good rushes and, and that'll be it. I did go back and watch his film from the Raiders last last year. He, he played for the Raiders just last season, played six games, and I was watching him just run from the shotgun, which is what he's going to be doing a lot with Russell Wilson, and he looked fantastic to me. I mean, it seems like he still has the, the jump cuts, the power, the anger that he runs with, and it, it seems like he's actually, from what I saw, still a more dynamic back than Chris Carson, who's good, but basically just kind of a slam back, a bruising back. The question is, can he run four times or 18 times? If it's four, I don't, I don't really give the Seahawks much of a chance, but if it's 18, they certainly could win at home. One question I wonder about, or one area I wonder if this makes a difference, when you look at the experience versus lack of, with Russell Wilson being in the playoffs many, many times, and then you have Jimmy Garoppolo, who hasn't. Do you think that might be a difference in this game? No question. I, Russell Wilson hasn't played well the last month or so. I mean, his quarterback rating since the Niners played them is 90. And Jimmy Garoppolo really has played well. But none of that may really matter in this game. As you said, Russell Wilson has played on huge stages a million times. And Jimmy Garoppolo really hasn't. This will be by far the biggest game of his career and also the biggest test. He played in New Orleans where it's loud. And, and he played well. But this is different. It's not, just, it's not just the noise. It's Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll is one of the best defensive coaches maybe of all time. He's up there with... Bill Belichick, and, and when he faced uh, Garoppolo just a month and a half ago, he made Garoppolo look bad, especially in the second half. After halftime, Garoppolo's quarterback rating was 41 in that game, and he really couldn't get anything going. So I, 
I've seen a lot of 49ers, like Colin Kaepernick, for example. He played some amazing games with the Niners. I remember him going to New England and beating Tom Brady and putting up a lot of points, and then the very next week going to Seattle and, and just laying a dud. It's really, really the hardest place to play, and Jimmy Garoppolo has never done, has never faced a challenge like that before. I, I guess it's uh, a little premature to just expect the Niners to win, although I do. He, he would really need to play the game of his life. When you look at Russell Wilson, I mean, he's got 29 touchdowns, five interceptions. He'll hit 4,000 yards probably on Sunday. Do you think this is one of his best years, if not his best year overall? Yes, it is. But as I say, his production has dipped a little bit about the last uh, month and a half. Um, and he's lost some games. He should have won. Still having an, an excellent year. Still an MVP candidate and – Still someone who could single-handedly beat the 49ers on Sunday. But for whatever reason, he's getting sacked a lot more. You think of him as being able to avoid those hits. But what I see is a quarterback who's looking to extend extend the play to get the big completion down the field. And some of the time, he's running into sacks that he doesn't need to be running into. Uh, so I, I don't know if he feels like his team is, is not quite up to par and he needs to do some superhuman stuff to keep them – competitive which is true i mean if you took him off that team they probably wouldn't have more than three or four wins or, or i i would think that's probably what it is because he's not an, an undisciplined quarterback he's a future hall of fame one of the things i i look at i was watching the game last week for the niners when they were playing the rams richard sherman it looks like he's still maybe not i know he's not as great as he was i believe he's only like 31 years old why did seattle let him go was it strictly about money or did they think maybe he didn't have the same quality of play left in him I think it was partially the money. I think it was partially the quality of play. And I think they also wanted to move on uh, with uh, in their locker room. Uh, there were a lot of reports that came out at that point that he was almost a subversive uh, personality in that locker room. And there was a lot of animosity, maybe not between him and Russell Wilson, but from Richard Sherman toward Russell Wilson. And I think uh, Pete Carroll basically felt like, you know what? Russell Wilson is the face of our franchise. If you're on board, stay with us. If you're not, go. And I think that had a lot to do with it. And maybe it was the wrong call, but the Seahawks seemed like quite a cohesive team that was on the verge of fracturing two or three years ago. And the fact that they bring Marshawn Lynch back now is so interesting because that was really his team when they were great. It wasn't Richard Sherman's team. It wasn't Russell Wilson's team. It was Marshawn Lynch's team. And, you know, they didn't let him run the ball in for the touchdown in that second Super Bowl, and they paid for it. It seemed like they kind of wanted to give it over to Russell Wilson. And now uh, they're desperate, and they need to bring Marshawn Lynch back. What an amazing story it would be if he went out and won the game for them. I know you asked me about Richard Sherman, and I went to Marshawn Lynch. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. I mean, the, the Marshawn Lynch thing I think is fascinating as well. We're talking Seattle San Fran football with Grant Cohn from the Santa Rosa Press Democrat here on ESPN Honolulu, 92.7 FM and 1420 AM via the Zephyr Insurance Hotline. From what I gather also, it seems like the health of both teams are fairly okay, but I do understand that the Niners are missing. I guess he's a backup. Julian Taylor, the defensive lineman, is that any kind of a big loss for them for this game on Sunday? Well, it. It's a big loss because they're also missing their starting nose tackle, D.J. Jones. So they're down to really no nose tackle. They're vulnerable on the ground. And that's why I say if, if, if Marshawn Lynch has anything left, if he has gas in the tank, the Niners are really vulnerable because they don't – they play this wide nine defense, which uh, puts a lot of space between the defensive linemen already. It, it's, it's much more oriented to stopping the pass and stopping the run. So the Niners don't have their nose tackles. They don't have – D Ford, their speed rusher. They don't have Quan Alexander, their best their best coverage linebacker. Uh, they don't have their strong safety, Jaquaski Tart. So they're banged up. Although their offense um, is healthier than it was the first time the Niners played the Seahawks. But to me, the Seahawks are really injured. I mean, not having their left tackle is a big deal because the guy who replaced him last week was giving up sack after sack to the uh, Cardinals, and it didn't seem like the Seahawks could really do a whole lot. Um, with them there it's either going to be jamarco jones who's i believe a rookie or george fant who's a sixth offensive lineman tight end so i really the niners are healthier and that's why they're uh road favorites by three points despite not having one in seattle since 2011.
You know, I, I don't remember George Kittle in college. It seemed like for some reason Iowa was turning down, turning out all these great tight ends. How do you describe the way he has played? I mean, he's not Rob Gronkowski, but in some ways he's even better. And I just love every time I watch him play. I had him on one of my fantasy teams. The guy had a record for the NFL last year, and it looks like he's continuing it when healthy this year. How do you describe what George Kittle has done and what he means to the Niners? Yeah, uh, he he was blocking at Iowa, which is so interesting. The Niners drafted him in the fifth round to be a blocking tight end, and he's a fantastic blocking tight end. But what makes him the heart of the team, I mean, he really is the heart and soul of the team, not Jimmy Garoppolo or Richard Sherman. It's Kittle. And what's interesting about him, he's only he's a fifth-round pick, so he's making like, what, $400,000 a year. He's one of the cheapest players in the league, and he's one of the best players in the league, but he, he plays harder than everyone else. There was a touchdown catch he had a few days ago where he was double-teamed off the snap, and he just kept running. He just ran away from the double team until he worked himself open. And it's, it's so refreshing and inspiring to see some fifth-round pick who's making basically peanuts comparatively to, to his peers uh, outwork the entire, uh, his entire locker room and, and, and the opponents as well. I think that's why everyone has such uh, admiration and respect for him. And what I want to say, what makes him great, you compare him to Rob Gronkowski. Rob Gronkowski was like a, a heavyweight tight end. I would consider – George Kittle, more of like a middleweight. He's very fast, faster than Rob Gronkowski. Doesn't score a lot of touchdowns. He's not like what Gronkowski was where you just put him out uh, out wide in, in the red zone and throw him jump balls. It's not really Kittle's game. He's great after the catch, and he is a great blocker, although it's controversial. Doug Gottlieb said he can't block. He actually is an excellent blocker, but he's such a good receiver. He's so fast that usually people put a strong safety on him instead of a linebacker, and he can just – really forklift safeties off the field. What uh, Dan Quinn and w- w- the head coach of the Falcons did a couple of weeks ago, he's a disciple of Pete Carroll. It's what, something the Seahawks might do this weekend is he put a linebacker on George Kittle, which is a little counterintuitive. You think, well, he can run away from a linebacker. And Kittle did have a really good game receiving uh, in that game, but you put a linebacker on him, he's, Kittle, he's a middleweight tight end. He's about 250 pounds, not 270, and he's not going to dominate a linebacker as a, as a blocker in the run game. And I think people feel like as great as he is as a receiver, his biggest contribution is as a, as, as a run blocker for the Niners run first offense. And I think that really sums up what a double, what a dual threat he is. Well, can't wait for this game. Smarter the NFL or the networks, I guess, to make this the late game on Sunday afternoon here, evening on the West Coast. And at least both teams are in the playoffs, so there's some satisfaction, but there's a lot at stake, as we mentioned. Grant, thank you so much for joining us today and breaking down this big game. We appreciate your time. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. All right. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate that. Grant Cohn from the Santa Rosa Press Democrat here on ESPN Honolulu, 92.7 FM and 1420 AM via the Zephyr Insurance Hotline.